The main road, if there's heavy traffic, especially large lorries, they could cause a vibration, also cause infrasound. In addition, we're going to get a lot of extraneous noise and people may misinterpret that as being, you know, as the result of a spirit talking or uh, audible phenomena. In addition, with the electricity next to the graveyard and very high levels of EMF, that may be the thing that's responsible for some of the experiences in the graveyard. Now, tonight, the actual date is quite significant. Midnight, it becomes 6 of the 6th, 06. That, I think, for me, is quite exciting. The connotations that sort of surrounding those numbers, what do you think? At the end of the day, we are essentially a paranormal investigation team. There's a lot culturally about these three numbers, 666, being the mark of the beast, the devil in essence. So why not at midnight, let's set something up and see what happens. And time will tell if these are just numbers or if the devil will reside with us tonight. And can mediums David Wells and Ian Shillito offer us any forewarning of the dangers that exist at Preston Manor? Something nasty in the woodwork in this room. I think he's really frustrated. And grumpy. Very grumpy, yeah. but cantankerous. It has a devilish face to it. Really? Yeah, it, it's <gasps> almost horned. I'm finding it quite difficult to breathe. Almost like a coffin went. <laughs> history is packed into this 400-year-old home in Brighton. But is Preston Manor really as peaceful and unassuming as it appears to passers-by? With both mediums David Wells and guest psychic Ian Shillito ready to offer us their insight into this property, we were ready to begin along the lavishly furnished ground floor. I don't like this room. I want to, I want to come in it because I don't like it. There's a couple of things in my ears. One is a wailer, you know, a wailing woman. But I also feel there's something that's shifting around and, and kind of scaring me. Oh. It feels active, like there's a ball of energy in the room. It feels like there's a spiritual activity. So it feels to me like there's a huge... Can you hear it? Yes. I heard that. It didn't sound like it came from him here. No. See, so here we go again, when he just started. There is powerful energy in here, and I'm starting to get really hot. Um, and, and... I just moved my weight. No, it was a... No, it was a bang. Where, where do you think it's coming from? It's either out, it's out there, or it's it's really soft coming in the walls. There's nobody out there though, is there? No. If there's any spirits in the room, anyone wants to talk to us, could you please make your presence known by tapping twice the yes? Mm. Months for no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's twice. <laughs> twice. Just tapping again. OK. She seems to... It's a woman, definitely. She seems to have been either stabbed I obviously am sensing things here, but she feels more outside to me. Um, she's being drawn towards me. I think she's a nun. Are you a nun? Can you tap for me four times if you're a nun? Come on, Kieran. Come on. What is your, that? You looking at everyone's feet? Yeah, I'm trying. Where is it coming from? <laughs> can, you, can you get any sense of? It's this. Side of the room. Yeah, I that's, yeah I, that's what I feel too. I'm just interested. I'm just going to stand it outside. Yeah. Don't you think that is odd? Yeah, I think it's very odd. I'll come very outside odd. with you actually. So it's a nun? Yeah. Um, she's, she's pulling me. She's pulling me on an arc. She's going like that. Like an arc. Oh, right. I think the reason she's doing that kind of shape is the place is different. It's not. The, it, this isn't it. This isn't her home. I was going to say, what's a nun doing in a manor house? It's not. It doesn't feel like a manor house. It, it feels much more so people will come for help. That's very strong, wasn't it? Yeah, it's very strong. Okay. It seems like it's actually coming from this wall. Right. Really. 
She seems, she actually seems very honest. And you know how sometimes when we get this, if they're haunting, it's because they don't go to the light because they feel they'll be judged and they'll be condemned to hell. There's not that with her. It's just no. constant tapping while you were saying that. She, she's not, that isn't the problem with her. Well, that's enough for us to start with. There's loads of information there. Straight through, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? I think so. So where does this, this nun haunt? Is she just specifically in that room, or do you feel she's everywhere? I think she's everywhere. She seems... I can smell lavender. Oh, yeah. Did it smell this strong before? No, very strong. It is yeah. very strong, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Who is You're this? Right, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just aware of her moving. She's being very dramatic about it all. She's... What? Go Sorry, on. that's just my shoulder. Maybe she was hit here. I've got one of those stabbing pains. I'll tell you what, what she did. She, she ran from here. So she came right in. She came right up to this window. She went through the window. And then she popped back up in a coffin like this. And you saw that? Yeah. And that's what she did. She went right through the window and she, and she almost like a coffin went like this. I mean, what, what does that mean? Well, she's obviously out there buried, I would say. So she, you think out here, I can't get through there because it's padlocked now, but out here. It's where they shoved her. She's given me images of a hasty grave. Do you think her body is there now? I, I have no sense of it there now. Because I can feel... I can feel her moving still. When I'm asking a question in my head, she's moving. She's moving over towards the graveyard. She, she's shown me um, a consecration of the, of the body and her cross. So that, but basically saying she never... She was never given a proper burial. OK, which way? This, this way? way yeah. yeah. So much of the information that David had given did relate to past experience. Yet one crucial detail had so far remained absent. A name for this nun. You know, there, there's, it's either Alice or Agnes. There's two names. All right. Either of, Alice or Agnes. Yeah. So, Sister Alice, Sister Agnes. Yeah. And her body, mm. you know when you said that it was underneath where we were, and it was moved, when do you think that would have happened? I think it was Victorian, and I think she made her presence felt so strongly to the people in this house that they had to do something about it. I would think if you lived here on a day-to-day -day basis, and you had anything about you that was slightly spiritual, and bearing in mind the era, the Victorians, mm. hugely interested in it. Mm. If they had a seance or a spirit cabinet or, a, or something like that, they would have contacted her. She would have used that opportunity to make herself known. And when you say they contacted her, and you're, are, you, are you picking up the fact that it's in this room or is it in another, another room? It's not in this room. There is something, something nasty in the woodwork in this room. What sort of thing is nasty in here? One of these... One of those jobs, you know? One of those eyes and teeth um, that I like to call them. A male energy? Hard to tell because it has, for want of another word, something I, I firmly and want to say do not believe in. It has a devilish face to it. Really? Yeah, it, it's <gasps> almost horned. It feels, it feels that gross. Well, you know what we're going to do tonight, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, because midnight is going to be 6606. Six, six. Of course. But my natural instinct, which I should follow, takes me beyond that. It takes me to... I hate to say it, but it does take me back. It takes me to monks. Right. So there's one monk here that's... But he's, like, 